Hello, this time I am going to talk about relays that are suitable for use on the lawnmowers. At the first sight, it seems that there are no differences in the relays, but there are uh, little details that do matter. Finally, we will look at the test of how relays heat up over time. So, let's get started. The electromechanical relays I have collected here are basically divided according to supply voltage applied to these terminals, the voltage and current of the load they are switching, bringing these two terminals together, the number of contacts. There can be several working contacts for different circuits or different voltages. The type of contacts, normally open or normally closed, whether the contacts are closed when the relay switches or vice versa, and whether they are for constant load or not. I bet you know the most of the characteristics I've told, except the last one. Basically, constant load relays are normal or nothing special when we talk about standard relays that we know from cars or similar. But when we are talking about power relays, which are designed for high currents, things get a little more complicated. For example, here I have two relays that can be found at the good prices on websites like Amazon or eBay that are made for high currents. One of them, however, is not suitable for continuous load. The other one, if you read the product description carefully, is perhaps also not suitable for constant load, because they come in two versions. The relays are made up of a coil, which we apply voltage, and when the magnetic field is inducted, the contacts move or switch. As these are dimensionally large contacts, the coil must also be large to generate sufficient force to switch the contact. And because manufacturers usually try to create balance between relay size, price and quality, the coils heat up differently. If we take, for example, this relay, which is designed as a starter relay for petrol engine, whose switching is usually for a short time, like few seconds, there is really no problem. However, when a such relay is used to switch on the main power line, like we have in lawn mower, which requires a constant voltage, overheating of a coil can occur. Now let's take a look at the relay test I have here. All of them here are declared for 24 volts but with different currents. The two relays that are for 12 volts, I will test separately. First, I will test the relays for 24 volts, which I have connected to 28 volts to simulate alternator voltage. A difference of 4 volts on the 24 volt reference does not present a significant change. Relays are connected for 40 minutes, under constant 28 volts. Now let's take a look at the temperatures. First relay, no problem, 50 degrees Celsius. The second relay, 60 degrees Celsius, and terminals have 87 degrees Celsius on free air. I believe this relay is suitable for constant load only if you have cooling. I use this relay on my lawnmower and it works for uh, five years now. And the third relay, 19 degrees Celsius, is not suitable for constant load because coil is likely to overheat if the enclosure is already at 90 degrees Celsius. And the last test, both 12 volt uh, relays are at uh, 45 degrees Celsius.
And so we come to the end of today's video. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. I hope I have explained the topic well and help you on your way to choosing the right relay. If you find my content interesting, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, write me in the comment section. And see you next time in another video. Bye!